Welcome back to Rabbit Noise on Rabbit Radio. Joining me on the program now is Danny Estrin from Voyager. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you very much. Great to be here. It's awesome to have you join us tonight. Well, your new album, V, has just been released, and uh, it's such a strong album. You know, you, you did a crowdfunding campaign for it. Was that right? Yeah, we did. We did a, a Kickstarter. That was our, our vehicle of choice. What's the story behind that? The story behind it is that we've been on various labels. We've been on two, uh, three European labels, and then the last one was a US label. And no disrespect to the last label, they did very good by us, and Ken Golden's a mm. great guy. Um, but I really thought, you know, what value is a label adding to what we, we can't do ourselves? And I really questioned that a lot, and I questioned the way the music industry is going, and I thought there needs to be a fundamental change in this, and I want to be a part of it. And I think we... We had the fan base at the time to, to be able to do something like a crowdfunding campaign. And it was a huge risk. And I'll, I'll admit that we were shaking, shaking in our boots as we set that initial target of 10,000 to finish the album. And we got that in three days. And then we almost made double that. And just, it just confirms that when you have a loyal fan base already, crowdfunding is the absolute way to go. And then we decided we, if we can do that, we can do the whole thing by ourselves. And that's what we're doing. And it's bloody hard work, but it's awesome. I've got to say, that's a mad effort three days you know sometimes you hear bands you know it takes a little while but you know it's just testament that you know your fans love you and they they want they want more more voyager so yeah and, and it's not only it's not only local fans i mean australia was was a, a substantial part of it with the funds that we got but um north america was huge we got you know even central america south america europe so that almost overseas almost made up about 50 percent of the um of the component so it's just great to see that we've got such a fan base all over the world not just in australia you know that's amazing you know for an australian band uh to have that that strong support from around the world you know uh, congratulations man thank you thank you it's very humbling i must say how is it going into uh working on this album compared to your previous album the meaning of i um, very smoothly. It was all smooth sailing, I have to say, in this lineup. Um, and, you know, we have had a few lineup changes in the past, mm. but I'm, in this lineup, something just worked so well. Ash, dude called the, the, the new drummer, just contributed so well with, with a, a very unique sort of style of drumming, you know, taking off where, where the old drummer left off. And it was just a very join, it was, it was a conjoined effort. It wasn't just, me bringing the main song to the to the rehearsal room and then the other guys sort of jamming to it and making a, a full song out of it. It was really pretty much a collaborative effort. And, you know, Scott brought a lot more the sort of the rhythmic sort of genty style to it. Simone's trademark solos are still there. Our catchy trademark choruses are still there. Um, you know, Alex would even get a, a bit of slap bass in there just to give that, that extra rhythmic groove. And it just gels so well, I think, and, and there was no problems. Um, in fact, we probably had problems choosing the tracks we wanted to go on the album, and in the end, we just went, Bug, bugger it, let's put all of them on there. In the lead-up to uh, going into the studio, did you test out any of these lies? We did up. actually. We t yeah, we tested out Orpheus live, um, and just before off air, I can reveal uh, that you said that it was one of one of your favourites. Yeah, um, definitely. It, it, to be honest, live it didn't. People were like, "Oh, okay, yeah, no, that's cool," but they didn't. I didn't think they quite got it because it was so multifaceted. It had so many different um, different sections to it. So we we started do, uh, toying around with breaking down as well, which I think is one of the tracks that's it's one of the most popular on, on the album and it sort of leads from Meaning of Eye into the new Voyager um, quite quite well. But um, yeah, Orpheus didn't really work live, to be honest, which is which is interesting. Oh, well, I find that, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that, as I said to you, that's my favourite one off the album so far. But uh, yeah, well, we, yeah I, I like it too. So it, it was a surprise. Did we be testing it out again? I don't know, to be honest, Neil. I don't know. I think it's, um, I think obviously hyperventilating. I think what will make it into um, into the set. But I'm really curious to see what other uh, songs are favourites. So I think what we might do before the tour in July of, around Australia is just do a Facebook poll and say, you know, what which are, which songs do you, do you like most from the album? And I think that the, the top two or three will probably play. I think that's a great idea. You know, I having that, so. uh, you know, that crowd interaction, you know, with, with your set and things like that. I, I think that that's. That'll definitely work. Well, I think crowd interaction is the key, and, and it's a key to the Kickstarter campaign as well, and it's a key to, I think, why we're, we're so good with our fans. Um, we get on the Facebook constantly. We're commenting on people. If someone says, oh, I don't like this or whatever, you know, we'll have a discussion and say, oh, why don't you like this? And, oh, thanks for coming down to the show. So we, we, we're, very, we're very interactive with our fans, and I think 
you know, the the days of the rock star in the 80s, you know, the Bon Jovi, the private jet, I think they're over and you really need to be out there talking to your fans because they want to be part of the experience. And I, as a fan of other bands, know that that's what I want. I can only imagine that our fans would want the same. I think that's, that's an awesome attitude to have, man. Because, I mean, there are some bands that... I wouldn't say they stick to their old, the old ideals, but, you know, it's with the world changing with, you know, the internet and things like that, it's like, uh, you know, bringing the fans closer into the experience, that's that's definitely, uh, I guess, why I'd be working so well. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, no, there's no substitute for that. You can't have a person running your Facebook page or your Twitter page or whatever, because they just don't... They just don't understand what what the band is about necessarily, and communicate in the way that the band mm. would. Now, for sure, man. Well, you know, you've had such a, a successful career with with Voyager, and you, you know, you've toured the states a couple of times. Uh, how do you find the scene is over there compared to back home here? Um, I would say the the fans over there are um, exceptionally loyal. I think once once you've got them, they will stick with you for a long time. I don't know whether that's America or Canada or whatever, or that's just progressive metal or, or, or that sort of style of music. But I find that the loyalty is incredible, and they're, they're extremely welcoming and extremely keen to, to, to listen. But I have to say the same thing about Australian fans. You know, there is... There's definitely there's definitely a difference in in, in the in the feel, um, whereas Americans seem to sort of like that band status that um, you know you, you almost you almost feel like you have to come across as a little bit cocky, whereas in Australia mm-hmm. it's very much a oh no one likes the tall poppy syndrome you have to kind of play yourself down and it's really interesting to see you know the the whole rock star thing goes down pretty well in the states. Um, whereas it doesn't go well down at all in Australia. So it's pretty interesting to tour to various places and see how it goes down. That is pretty interesting. I, I have heard that uh, from some people, especially how we are down here, you know. Yeah, and, and it's, fun, it's funny when we when we went down. I think because we're Australians and we're kind of you know we're a bit friendly and we talk to the talk to the talk to the fans and hang out at the tour bus afterwards and you know invite people back for for a beer or whatever. Um, I think they they really appreciate that and they they they've never really seen that before. Whereas it's mostly like you know, I'm a rock star, you know, back to my tour bus and you know screw you type of thing um, from, from some of the local bands. And I think that that sort of friendship that you forge with the fans is um, is second to none. That's something I really respect about you guys. You know, it's just it's just hard to keep up sometimes. I'm going to say, you know, you just want to you want to answer every single Facebook message, every single email and stuff. But it just after a while, it just becomes really really tough to keep up with it. So, and I can only hope and imagine it will get um, it will get tougher as we hopefully grow grow our fan base. Yeah, I mean that's understandable. I'm sure people understand. You know. You, you can't be everywhere at once as much as you'd love to be. Yeah, you know, I would but, like to be. But at least, you know, you, you're out there on the road, and when people come and see you, you know, you, you can always say hello to them in person, you know. Exactly, exactly. As well. Well, uh, you know, you've toured and played with, you know, some awesome bands over the years as well. Um, is there one band that stands out to you that you've, you know, shared the stage with that, you know, maybe has been a highlight of your career so far? It's just blown your mind that you've shared the stage yeah. with. I don't think it's blown necessarily blown my mind. I mean, it's blown my mind that we shared with you know, the stages like Nightwish and Devin Townsend and Children of Bottom and stuff like that. And even you know Rhapsody of Fire, I was a big fan uh, many many years ago. But in terms of having, I think the best time on stage and on tour was to have to be Ailstorm when we did their Australian tour because we were just. We just gelled on on such a hilarious, silly, sort of cynical level um, that it it just made the whole touring experience really, really fun. And I never thought we'd match well with a band like Ailstorm, but it just worked exceptionally well, and it culminated in a a keytar duel. That's awesome, the uh, keytar duel with uh, Ailstorm. Is is there video footage of that online? There probably is, yeah. I don't know if I want to see it, because I think I may have had a couple of too many wines, but I'm certain (laughs) certain there is someone taking that footage. I'm not sure if we were playing in the same key, but it was definitely awesome to watch. Oh, man, that's that's awesome. Well, uh, you just about to hit the road uh, for a few shows in July with uh, our very own Caligula's Horse from up here on the coast. So what can fans expect from this tour? Look, I think for um, for those who've seen Caligula's Horse, I'm personally a big fan, and I really, really wanted these guys to, to share the stage with us. I think they're, they're, um, one of the, they're sort of one of the top Australian progressive, um, new progressive rock slash metal bands. And I think they just deliver an excellent performance, from a, especially from a musical point of view. Um, but what can you expect from the Voyager show? Well, you can expect entertainment. You can expect that we're not going to take ourselves 100% seriously. Um, our music is serious, but our 
performance is exactly that. It's a performance and we don't want to come across as just standing there still with their instruments and playing our songs. You can listen to a CD at home if you want. We'll put on a show, we'll do some fun stuff and uh, you can just expect a, a good hour of a really solid entertainment, I think, from us anyway. Well, I think the Brisbane show, especially looking at the lineup, is uh, that's a pretty solid lineup. You know, you got you guys, Caligula's Horse, and uh, Toe Hider as well, and uh, Dark Symphonica as well. Another great. Yeah, band. I think it's going to be. I'm really pumped for it. Um, I'm really pumped for the venue. I'm really pumped for for, for Brisbane. Uh, we've always had a good reception there, and it's um, it's a really cool lineup. Uh, it's just going to be a really fun night, I think. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it, and I know a few people that are, are really looking forward to it as well. So. Uh, tickets are on sale for that now as well, isn't it? They are indeed. Yep. You know, I've got to say, everyone, get out there, get your tickets, because it's, it's that's, that's a lineup you just don't want to miss, especially you absolutely know, at the uh, bright side, the new venue. Everyone's going crazy about that venue. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. We played with uh, Orphan Land recently at the um, the church or the rev, whatever it was called, which is the, the, the front room of that, and it was brilliant. And um, actually, the, the bright side happened to be our backstage area, and I saw the room, and I was like, I need to play here. So... Um, should be good. Should be a, a, definitely a good night and good vibes and good musicianship, I think, as well. I think so too, man. Totally agree. Well, uh, I can't wait for that. So, uh, after this, what's next for Voyager? After this is, uh, well, after the Australian tour, certainly, is uh, Europe is on the cards. We're playing the Prog Power Festival in uh, in Europe, uh, along with um, some pretty big name bands, which is awesome. Um, Pain of Salvation being being one of them, um, and I think there's also another another Australian band playing. I think Aeon of Horus are playing as well, which is which is really cool. So we're trying to get some dates around that um, around that festival. We've got something planned uh, with a couple of bands um, just to tour through through the European countries, just some small club shows because it's been a while since we've been to Europe, and um, you know we've got a good promo team in Europe at the moment. Just did an interview with Metal Hammer Germany. Hopefully they'll give us some publicity and and people will uh, will come to the shows and rediscover uh, Voyager and hopefully the fan base will grow and grow and grow and uh, we'll conquer the world one day with progressive metal. Get it out there everywhere. <laughs> Everyone needs a bit of prog metal. Well, um, we're going to go to my favourite track, Orpheus from B. Now, thanks so much for taking the time to chat to us tonight and wish you the very best of luck with all your plans with Voyager and uh, your tour. And uh, we'll see you in Brisbane on July 11th at the Brightside. Awesome. Cannot wait. Actually cannot wait. See you all there.